Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Courtside with the Olympics in Tennis, part of the Tennis Channel Podcast Network here for the annual Wimbledon preview episode we have with me, Hall of Famer, and co-host Steve Flink. Let's timestamp the pod, Steve. It's Saturday morning in the States, so a lot of things can change between now and first ball. Um, that being said, Novak and Andy Murray are playing. Yeah, I mean, as we sit here now, it sounds like no, Novak, you know, he came off an exhibition with, with Medvedev yesterday that he won three and four and said he played pain-free. That's very encouraging. Murray, it sounds a bit more like a roll of the dice that he's hoping he can get through a match, but we'll keep our fingers crossed. It's great to have them both in the draw, and I, get, I hope we get to see them in a couple of days. And Andy's also playing doubles with his brother, you know, health-wise, you know, considering too. So that'll be fun to see as well. So, yeah, uh, I echo your thoughts on both. We hope we get to see him play. Novak, when you look at it, Steve, he doesn't have a horrible draw. I mean, we don't like to, you know, go too far into the future here because we'll do one midweek, um, you know, mid-tournament. But he doesn't have a terrible, terrible draw. I think his, his biggest obstacle is his health, obviously. Yeah, no, look, it's the first three rounds on paper look look pretty good. And then, you know, maybe Holgaruna, who always plays him tough and has beaten him once, uh, uh, twice, actually. And then maybe Hubie Hercos, who gave him a great match last year, and obviously he's a fearsome player on grass with that serve. And uh, Novak squeaked through in four sets last year, winning the first two in tie breaks. It was a, not an easy match. And then, and then we'll see where it goes from there. So it could be Runa to play her costume, maybe to play Zara. But those first three rounds doesn't look like anything too burdensome for him. So he should be pretty happy with, with that. To have a chance to play his way into some decent form and test that knee. Agreed. Now, Yannick Sinner, we, we may not be able to say the same exact thing about his draw. Um, he plays Yannick ha um, Han for the first round. He should get through that. But then he plays the winner of Berrettini and Fuksovic, and both those players can give Sinner some problems. Yeah, they absolutely. I mean, look, uh, clearly it, it's it's Berrettini that would be the one that would perhaps be a bit more intimidating, just because you know Sinner knows that Berrettini was in the finals here three years ago, losing to Novak in a four set final, and that he loves the grass. He's a great, he's terrific on the grass with that serve, and and it's his favorite surface. So. Sinner would feel like that could be a threat if Veratini's having a great serving day. I think he'd rather play Fusovic, to tell you the truth. But I think the fans would rather see the two Italians go at it and, you know, the big server against the best player in the world right now or number one ranked player in the world. I hope we get that second rounder. I think Sinner would get through it, but might, might be kind of a tough, hard-fought four-set match if they meet. Agreed. And one American, um, one of two Americans that I want to talk about. Um, but the first one, um, Sebi Korda playing Davidovich Fakina in the first round. That's not going to be easy. Sebi dangerous on grass. Again, um, we just hope health with Sebi is all good because a lot of times he can get um, sidestepped by, by injuries. That should be an entertaining first round match. And, and we'll yeah. see if Sebi can uh, make some inroads in this draw. No, listen, he's well prepared. He had two good grass court tournaments coming in. He's got to be happy with some of the results he got. He had a win over Dimitrov. He's he's and he's and he's holding up. There was a little injury scare at Queens that didn't seem to amount to anything in the Tommy Paul match. So I feel like he should get through that. Davidovich Fokina hasn't really been the same player the last year and a half or so that we that we had seen up in you know in the previous two years. So I I still like his chances, particularly over best of five, I'll give him the edge. And another player we've talked about quite a bit, uh, not just the past few weeks, but the past couple seasons, um, Tommy Paul. He's look at, looking at his draw, Steve. You know, we we, we never want to get too, too crazy because we go match by match, but Tommy has a good draw. And he has Casper Rude, who really doesn't like this stuff that much, right? Well, I didn't like the grass. And Bublik in his quarter – Tommy can't Tommy should get through that and get to his quarter. I think so. I think so. And, you know, look, he's just won Queens, which is a nice confidence boost. And he, he likes the way he's playing. We, we know how adaptable he is surface to surface. And yeah, I mean, the, the, and he also is a, is a top of the line professional. He's not, he's not going to look at that draw and say, 
and analyze it the way we did or the way we are and say, oh, I'm, I'm good. I'm fine to the quarters. No. He'll go out ready and prepared for each and every match. And, and uh, I, I do like that draw, though. And I'd love, I'd love to see him make a deep run into this tournament. And the potential is there. The potential is there. And, you know, we'll, we'll see where we are when we do this next, you know, at some point during the holiday weekend in the States next weekend. But, you know, there's a potential. We talked about Tommy getting to his quarter. He could potentially play Carlos Alcaraz. And Tommy has had some success against Carlos. So um, interesting. I, I, I will ask you about Carlos because obviously just winning the French, um, he won Wimbledon last year. No injuries really right now. It seems to be whatever was, was plaguing him heading into the French Open. He seemed to get through that, get through that tournament. Um, kind of pressure yeah. is off, I feel, with him, with this tournament. Um, he really, I don't think everyone really expected him to, to win it last year. Maybe he can go in kind of um, loose and just let it fly a bit. Yeah, I mean, that that's the positive way. Listen, that's his nature, too. And and I, I see your point. And I think Carlos and, and Juan Carlos Ferrero are trying to approach it that way having said that he's the defending champion and he demands so much from himself you you see how motivated he is and how he believes that he belongs as a major champion winner and in his mind he should defend it so that does put a certain amount of pressure on him but but you're right about the state of his body right now and i think he was very wise to keep wearing that arm sleeve mm -hmm. through the french and now it looks like he can play without it and uh yeah, if he's healthy, obviously he's going to be, you know, he's going to be right up there among the top. You know, I, it, it could come down to a big semifinal with him and Sinner. We'll see. But Carlos, I think he likes his chances going in. Gets back to what you just said, though. I, li I would like to see him have to go through somebody as dangerous as Tommy Paul, who is not intimidated by Carlos. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I'd like to see us get that match. But, but I, I do believe he'll try to stay loose, as you said, and – He's uh, he's very comfortable. Let's put it this way. He's comfortable coming back as the champion. He doesn't mind that one bit. Right. I agree. All right. On the on the women's side, there's some couple really intriguing first round matches as well. We'll start with the top seed, Iga Sviatek versus Sophia Kennan. And you remember, Sviatek has not had her best success on grass, obviously. And then two, Sophia Kennan took out Coco Goff in the first round last year before right. Coco went on her tear in the summer. Um, so Kennan will not be uh, scared to set foot on that on on that court against the top seed. No, she's not the player she once was who could win majors and get to major finals. That it's not the same Kennan. On the other hand, on any given day, she can still play basically that brand of tennis. And and uh, Iga's going to have to be. I think Iga over best of three still finds a way to win that match, but it, it, it's a, it could be a severe test. And obviously we know Iga hasn't been beyond the quarters of Wimbledon. And she hasn't yet demonstrably proven herself on the grass that she wants to do that this year. And the second seed who is no longer on her side of the draw, Coco Goff, who's always an Iga's, it always feels like she's an Iga's quarter or half of the draw. Um, she plays Caroline Dolhide, and, and I do expect Coco to get through that match. That said, Caroline can play some dangerous tennis. It's not your typical first-round opponent. I believe they played in the first or second round in Australia just a couple yeah. slams ago. Right. Coco won a close first set, then, then kind yeah. of ran away with it in the second set. But um, that's, that's going to be an interesting match to watch as well. Yeah, I think it will have helped Coco, by the way, to have been through that match. You know, she'll have very uh, – clear memories of, of the patterns of that match. And, and I think she'll feel like, and I think she's, her form has really come around here. And I, I think Coco likes the way she's playing. And uh, I think she'll come in with some confidence. It's, it, she could lose a set, but I kind of like her in two, in along the lines of four and five to win that match. Let's talk about mindset of hers coming in because since that first round loss at Wimbledon last year, she went to the U S open, won it. She got to the semis of Australia and semis of the French. So she's been very consistent getting to the late, late rounds of the, the three slams following her earlier, her early exit at Wimbledon. I don't think she's coming into this tournament kind of scared and thinking about that. She's in a totally different place, knowing that she's been very consistent, the three slams past Wimbledon, and almost like she's looking to prove something actually coming into it this year's draw. No, I, I agree. I think she believes she can win it. And you alluded to the draw. She's got to be happy but Iga being on the other side, she also knows it's potentially if she does get to the final, 
it may not be Iga in the final. I mean, right. uh, I think it could, it, 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 it's not the same certainty. We knew, you know, we know on the other surfaces, clay is, clay is her, her best surface, Iga, and the hard courts is not far behind. On grass is still some question marks. So in the, in the back of Coco's mind, she's thinking, well, I'm going to take it match by match, but if I can get to the final, I might not be playing Swiatek. And I, I think she's very optimistic yeah. going into Wimbledon. Um, let's talk Sabalenka and Rabakina just to get the, the 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 top four seeds in. You know, Sabalenka uh, in her press conference just a short time uh, ago said she's been having some issues with her shoulder. And Rabakina, um, she seems healthy now, but it's, you know, Rabakina's with, withdrawn from four big tournaments just because of illness, maybe not something physical type of pain. But um, those two, I mean, that's going to be interesting if they're not a hundred percent, you can look for some upsets there. Yeah. And I think that also plays into Coco's hands. The fact that, but they're both, they both have had these struggles. So that that's only going to bolster Coco's belief in herself. I should, I'm, I'm, I've got my fingers crossed that it, if we're back in loses at this tournament, it's, it's not through any kind of illness or, or any kind of injury, but because she gets outplayed because uh, she's a great grass court player. She's just a great player period. And you don't want to see her hindered again by, some kind of an ailment. Uh, let, let's hope Wimbledon sees her at her best. And I am really curious to see if Anz Jabor could make a run this year because last year it's almost expected that she almost everyone thought she was going to win the title last year, especially when she got to the final there, right? Um, overwhelming favorite. Um, there were some things that came up that that prevented her from winning that match. Um, see her mindset and see if she can come in fresh and ready to go. Yeah, it, 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 we her boosters should be at least mildly encouraged. She's been playing well. Uh, it looks like she's healthy. There was there was an issue in her loss to to Coco, but I think I think she's going to be all right for Wimbledon. And as long as physically she's near one hundred percent, obviously this has been you know she has been in the finals of the U.S. Open, but the the two Wimbledon finals, this is where she's played her bet is on the edge of of realizing a dream. So may, maybe it does happen this year. She would be an immensely popular champion if she pulled this off. And if she did manage to get back to another final, that crowd would be 103% behind her. Yeah. And then two other players I would just want to throw out for those who are following along the draw, it's entry 101 would be Bianca Andrescu and entry 117 would be Naomi Osaka. They played each other a couple of weeks ago in an unbelievable match. Those two, um, again, very dangerous. And uh, I would I would consider them right now floaters in the draw kind of weird to say that with they're both won grand slams before so um you don't typically look at people with with, with those accolades as floaters in the draw but just circumstances um to where it is today they can make a run oh no doubt about it i mean and 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 dress you because she just has these these rare gifts I and mean, she's a great returner and she's a very inventive player uh she she's a she's extremely talented and she can play on any surface in Naomi's case we transition to grass in her career but there's no reason why she can't do it she made inroads on the clay and nearly obviously nearly toppled Sviantec at the French Open which would have been a spectacular win I feel like right now she's in very good form she's lost a bunch of close matches and Sviantec and also that loss to Andrescu and then another tough one after that but I feel like she's so close to her best form that if she can get through a couple of tough matches early, she can make a, a deep run at Wimbledon. And she she's coming in with the right mindset. So I'll be watching her very closely. And I know you're going to head over there uh, late next weekend, I believe. So we'll do something probably before you head over. We'll see if we do something there when you get back. But um, we'll get much more into matchups and, and whatnot um, during our next episode it'll be like good, good spot mid tournament to do that before we leave. Is there anything that that stuck out to you that you want to address that we have not touched on yet? No, I mean, I think, I think we've been, we've done it pretty thoroughly. I, I, I look at the men and obviously it turned out that Sinner and Alcaraz are on the same half of the draw. At that point, nobody knows, nobody knew about Novak. Then as we said earlier, the encouraging signs, he played the EXO with Medvedev Djokovic and looked good. So, I hope it works out well from his end so that we could potentially get you no, know, there's there'd be the chance for Novak facing either Sinner or Alvarez in the final. 
because otherwise it would have been better, uh, all things considered, to have Sinner and Alcaraz on opposite halves. It's fine as long as Djokovic is in good form and making a run. But it also gives us the potential for a, a riveting semifinal, second straight major semifinal confrontation between Alcaraz and Sinner that will have the feeling of a final. So that's the plus side of the equation. One other American we haven't touched on yet, and he's in the finals of the tournament today. I think he's down in Eastbourne, I believe, is Taylor Fritz. Um, he, you know, he's obviously a dangerous grass court player. Remember, a couple of years ago, he he just barely missed beating Rafa um, in that run down there. And he's got he maybe plays Verev in the fourth round, so it's not the best draw. But Taylor, when playing well on grass, can can definitely make a run. Oh, he absolutely can. And uh, I mean, with that serve and, and his experiences there thus far and so close a few years back against Rafa to getting himself into the semis. And yeah, I think he thinks he can go very, very far in this tournament. And, and uh, if he were to win today, that would be it. That'd be a good boost coming into Wimbledon. But Taylor, yeah, absolutely. We talked about Tommy Paul. We talked about Corda, but it may well be that Fritz makes the deepest run of the Americans, potentially. Potentially. Yeah. Potentially. I still think if you look at the draw itself, I've, I've looked at Tommy to have the best chance to get to that quarter, but yeah. He's got a better draw. You can say that it's true, yeah. but Taylor also ha has got. Yeah. Um, okay. That said, um, we'll get into more deep matchups next, next weekend. Thank you for your time and uh, everybody get excited. It's going to be a good first week. Yeah. Well, David, looking forward to it. Speak to you. Uh, in about a week.